In this next video, I'm going to show you how to mobilize and manipulate the cervical dorsal junction or the cervical thoracic junction, which is basically C7 and T1. So where C7 is located, we're going to target that vertebra on the vertebra below. So it's basically a cervical thoracic junction. Now, one way will be that if you palpate the C7 and you notice that it drifts over to one side, let's say for my demonstration it comes over this side, which for me it's the right side, then I can use my thumb directly onto C7, spinous process, and use a technique to thrust across. So let's look at that method to start with. When we do this, because the cervical and the thoracic follow what we call a type 1 and type 2 motion, if it's dysfunctional, it normally fixates in type 2, which is a side bending and rotation to the same side. So to apply a technique for C71, we normally have to induce a type 1 motion, which is a side bending and a rotation away. So when we are doing this one, so if I find the prominent vertebra C7 and I place my thumb onto it laterally, I would then use this hand to then side bend towards the vertebra and induce a rotation away until I start to feel it down to that level, down to that level. I'm not going to use this hand to thrust the neck, okay, because you can easily irritate the neck. So I'm going to use my thumb onto the C7 and I'm going to start to initiate a lateral glide. So this would be a mobilizing technique for C7 to push it back to the central position. If you are going to do a manipulative technique, take a small breath. I'm not going to force this and as he breathes out, lock the joint and then when you're ready, just literally across and if it needs to cavitate, it'll probably cavitate as long as you are using the appropriate thrust. So then that would be a prone CT junction manip using the thumb directly onto the spinous process.